Volkswagen will stop the production of the Phaeton, which is the biggest Volkswagen you can buy. And they also stop the so-called Passat CC. And that means there is a gap. And they want to fill that gap with a new Volkswagen Arteon. This Gran Turismo is positioned above the Passat, what it's capable of and how it drives. Let's find out now. The Volkswagen Arteon is available in three different trim levels. The base is simply the already very well equipped Arteon. It includes, amongst other things, the progressive steering, LED headlights and the lane assist. In addition, Volkswagen offers the trim levels elegance in R-Line with even more extras. When the Arteon arrives at the dealers, there are three engines available for the car. They will have one petrol engine, four cylinder, two liters with 280 horsepower and two diesel engines, both two liter four cylinders with either 150 or 190 horsepower. Later the year, there will be the new 1.5 liter petrol engine available, the TSI, which we already know from the Volkswagen Golf and one diesel and one petrol engine, both with 190 brake horsepower, both two liter. And, uh, Gear shifting is easy either with a six-speed manual or the seven-speed DSG. For some of the cars, there is four motion available as well. And for all who wants even more power, Volkswagen told us that they are working on six-cylinder solutions for the Arteon. And they are also thinking about an Arteon R. Our Arteon features the four-cylinder, two-liter diesel engine with 240 brake horsepower and uh, 500 newton meters of torque. And I have to say that really works more than well. This is combined with a seven-speed DSG and that really is a very nice package. Top speed is 245 kilometers per hour, more than enough. Very important, Volkswagen says the Arteon should only take 7.1 liter per 100 kilometer driven in average and we really used only 7.6 while our test drive and we didn't even thought about it, we just saw it in the dashboard. I have to say that's more than fair. The interior of the Arteon really is very nicely made. We find great materials, good craftsmanship, everything is the way it should be, but that's because you sit inside of a Passat. It's absolutely the same as you will find in every Passat of Volkswagen. Now, there are some different colors, but that's it. Um, it's all good, but with this, um, let's say, promise from the outside, the car should have given a bit more luxury feeling or let's say something special at the interior as well. Um, regarding to the space, I have to say, we have loads of space as a tall driver as well as, as a, as a uh, tall co-driver. Um, the rear seats, they offer plenty of legroom, even more than the Skoda Superb, but because of the shape of the car, the coupe form, there's not enough headroom. And I think if you're taller than, let's say, 1 meter 80, 85, that's not fun sitting in it. Looking at the front of the Arteon, what you see it, it looks like it's all grill. So I would say this is for me the barbecue front. Um, but I have to say because of all these horizontal lines, the car looks very wide, very solidly on the road. Very important looking at the headlights, they come as standard as full LED headlights, but you can also order adaptive LED lights, which are, for instance, um, bring light into a curve even before you use the steering wheel, which, which is really nice when you drive at night or with bad weather. Uh, having a look at the bonnet, this is very wide. It goes down here into the wheel arch. So this is something very unique. And I think it's very sculptural. So I really like that shape. Looking at the side of the car, you see the shape of the car is very much a coupe or a Gran Turismo. We have this very long bonnet here. We have a quite flat glass house that really drops to the rear a lot. That really gives the car an extra dynamic look. And very important, we do have two important lines of the car this time. We have one that starts here at the bonnet, over the side, it just fades out here into the rear glasses. 
And another one, which I think is more important, is the one that is here, starts here and that runs across the whole car and into the taillights. That really looks very nice. And something I really like is this line down here with this chrome uh, application because that really is shadow and light and that really puts the car deeper down to the road. It looks very nice. But now let's have a look at the wheels because what you see here is we have 20 inch alloys, black, they are not standard. And what I really don't like because I think they're so beautiful is they only have one wheel for the whole car, which means the shovel form we see here is the same on both sides. That means it runs that direction here, the other direction on the other side. I think they should invest a bit more just to fix that thing. But the rest, a real beauty. Looking at the rear of the car, the first thing that you see are these very wide shoulders of the car. The car at the rear is a lot wider than at the front. That really gives the car a very solid look from the rear. And what I really like are these taillights here. They go around the car, around the corner, and they're not only very nice, they also come as standard with LED technology. Then, well, of course, very important for the car, these big exhausts, they really look very nice and they give extra sportiness. And because we're driving the R-Line, we do have this small spoiler here, which not only looks great, it also gives extra downforce while driving fast. The tailgate, that's an interesting thing because it's mounted up here at the roof, which means when you open it, you really have a big mouth to a very big boot. The roof-mounted tailgate guarantees easy access to the boot. With raised seats, there is room for up to 563 liters of luggage. If the rear bench folds back, the trunk of the Arteon offers up to 1,557 liters load capacity. The drive of the Arteon, I have to say, it's really a lot more dynamic than I expected it. Um, there are two main reasons for it. One is we do have a DCC, which you can adjust completely the way you want. So there's not just two or three steps, it's completely without any step from very um, luxury up to very sporty. And we do have the so-called progressive steering, which means you don't have to steer so much to drive the way you want. And this together with a very stiff um, base of the car really gives the car a dynamic that you will not expect from a car like this. And I have to say, it's great fun driving it. The assistance systems of the Arteon are the most modern of the Volkswagen fleet. The new adaptive cruise control ACC not only keeps the distance to the car in front, it also adjusts the speed to the environment using navigation data and its own sensor technology. Speed limits are automatically taken into account and the speed is adjusted in advance in front of roundabouts or a strong curve on the road. That was our review with the new Volkswagen Arteon. And I have to say, I really like the shape and the look of the car. It's absolutely fabulous, but it's a bit disappointing when you enter the car because then you sit in a standard Passat. So I would love to have a bit more of chic at the interior. Very important is the new adaptive cruise control works great because that really works with a sat nav and with a sign recognition. So the car really thinks about the road and does everything you normally have to do yourself. And on top of this, the new damper system is adjustable without any steps. So really you can adjust the car the way you want. So I think that's a really nice package, but it could be a bit more nice at the interior.